You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We have a special guest in the building. Yeah, no yeah, malice. yeah. No malice. Once again, he's still yelling at me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I respect yeah. it, though, because you're one of those guys who turned, turned their life to the Lord and didn't look back. A lot Amen. of rappers, they do it, and they after a while, they look back. Like one more last. Yeah, one more last album and let's just Oh man, <laughs> oh man. But you know, I, I I miss being out there with my brother, man. I really do. Really? Yeah, I do miss. I miss being with him. That's gotcha. what I miss about it. Yeah. Do you think it's because you see like the resurgence of Pusha T, kinda? I mean, this is like a second coming for Pusha. Well, maybe not because this is his first time being a solo artist, but. For him to still be relevant all these years later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, well, I see my brother as great, mm -hmm. you know. Um, to me, everything he does, uh, he's always at the top of his game. He's always right. in the know of, you know, whatever goes on. But um, as far as, you know, what I was talking about, about missing him and, and being with him, just being able to look out for my brother, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and just just out here in this world where everything is just like grab, grab, gimme, give gimme, give always pulling and pulling. Mm -hmm. My mama, grandmama always said, look out for your brothers and look at y'all look out for each other. So I miss not being there to do that. Right. You miss, I know that you miss the money at all because... Of course, the clips. Who don't money. miss money, but, man? You know, but now it's, it's like <laughs> who don't you miss are money? So wanted out there now. It's like y y but I feel like you have alternate out. ways to make money now too. Yeah, as yeah. Far as well, the, book, the documentary. Yeah, well, my God provides. Mm -hmm. He provides, and you know that's another thing. When I, when this, when everything happened, you have to step out on faith. You know, I seen, I seen a truth that I can't deny that mm -hmm. I that that I can't shake. I didn't know how I was gonna keep the lights on or keep them walls standing up, but. You know, I, I knew where I was called to go, what I had to do, and I did it. And, you know, my God has never let me down since. What did you see? I always wonder, like, what was the revelation? Bro, bro, there are many revelations. It's just doing the checks and the balances of your life, taking inventory of your life. Um, It was a lot of things that I was into that just wasn't conducive for me, my health, my marriage, my uh, relationship with my kids, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I'm just glad to be given a second chance. Do you feel like it's impossible to balance the hip hop with your spirituality? Uh, it's for, it's not even so much spirituality. It's the fact that I love Jesus, you know, and you know I'm into that word. I read that mm -hmm. word, and just to be uh in that kind of a lifestyle, which I'm not condemning, but for me, you know, it's just I can't I can't face that every day. All that kind of temptation and and desires and wants, like I just can't be in the middle of that every day. Do you ever watch shows like Preachers of Atlanta or any of those? Uh, no, nah, I don't really get into any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you you're not a you're not a preacher though, right? You haven't made that turn, have you? No, nah, I I like to think that I preach. Okay. Uh, everywhere I go, you know, and um, you know, we talk in the prisons. We've been in the prison systems, talking to at-risk youth, talking in churches, talking at colleges everywhere. And I'll tell you one of the things that I found mm -hmm. in the prisons. You would think somebody somewhere would be like, this guy don't know what he's talking about or you can't tell me nothing. But there is a thirst and a hunger and they look at you longingly to see what it is you have to say. These brothers need hope. You know, Absolutely. and I, I just want to share the hope that I have. That's can't been... sell dope forever, but you can sell hope forever. Well, hey, hey, yeah. You <laughs> show can't sell dope forever. But what about for sure. family and friends? Because you had a lot of people around you back right. when y'all when were out. There a lot of people that relied on y'all. Right, right. Are they still around or? Um, yeah, my, my friends are, you know, still around. Uh, we're not, we don't hang like we used to hang. But I'll tell you what I have found when there comes some kind of crisis, some kind of turmoil or chaos in their life. Oh, they come knocking at my door mm. and, they, and, and they call in my phone, you know. Um, there is, it's been like a, a breaking of the ice. Mm -hmm. And even when I go to the malls and to the grocery stores, people tell me, you know, that they've changed their life or they're working on their life and in, in, in because of the transformation that they've seen in me. So that encourages me. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feed off that as well. Do you mm -hmm. still make music at all? Yeah, I make music. I definitely okay. make music. Uh, we have a soundtrack to the end of Malice. The soundtrack is called Move and Wait. No pun. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I got I got two cuts on that. So, so is it like moving weight or like move? It's and getting weight? it's getting moving. weight off of your 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 back carrying dead weight around. Gotcha. You know that's what it's about. Yeah, yeah, the reason I asked you about that show is because um, one of the preachers he also records music and some people have an issue. They actually do their club in church. They they do church in the club. Okay. So they have a club and um, you know that's where the service is every week and yeah. And sometimes what you mean a club? Like they 
have a club at, when church is not going on? Like Saturday night, they open up and no Sunday morning the, where they have <laughs> oh. where they have the service at is inside of a club. Really? And then they perform and regular club or strip club. It's a it's a regular club. Really? Yeah. So mm. That's cool. I don't mind that because the Bible says you can't find God in no man made temple. So, I mean, yo, just fellow. It's all, it's all about fellowship. It's about me. fellowship. The church yeah. is not that building. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever two or more come together in his name, there he is in the midst. So me and you can have church together. It's not, it's, it's not about that building so right. much. Yeah. And for some people, maybe it's not as um, some people have, you know, they're intimidated. So maybe it's not as intimidating for people like that. have Intimidated by what? Going to the church? Yeah. Like some people might might say I haven't been to church in years and years and years. And it feels a little intimidating to just go. Like, I don't know. You know, um, searching for a church is is hard just because it's church. It it just it doesn't mean automatic uh, like it's great. You know what I'm saying? You you do have to search out a a good church and and, and hopefully you can find one. Um, You know, there's a hypocrites everywhere Absolutely. and 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 sometimes sometimes uh, people can get turned off by some of the actions of the church but what i say to that is you have to develop your own relationship with the word of god and see what it is you see and and let him talk to you and and get what you get out of it not from someone else's actions or, or, or what someone else is doing you got to take your eyes off a of man man defiles everything that he touches everything that was the reaction to you when you decided to go to the church? Like, how was the reaction from your peers, people around you? Um, You know, like I was saying earlier, my, my peers, I've always been a leader in my circle, you know. Um, so, so, so when God called me, uh, they didn't, they can't shun me. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. I do the shunning, <laughs> you know, yeah, in, yeah. In, in, in my circle. Um, and they respected it, you know. They respect. I'm not going to be like everybody was just, you know, riding for me because they weren't, of Mm -hmm. course. But, you know, when you're called to do something different, uh, you're not going to have the same friends and the same circumstances around you and the same scenarios. Things are definitely going to change. Is God loud? Like when he calls you, like, is it like a whisper? Is it loud? It's not it's not an audible voice. But um, I I do see God in the unlikeliest of places. Mm -hmm. I see him in nature. I see him. I see him in people. I see his intent. I see the plan. I know that he does not want us out here working and stressing and fussing and cussing with our spouse, spouses and, and, and fighting and the killing that's going on and the p- police brutality. I know enough about God to know that that is not him. Gotcha. You know, now one thing you said that that you are still making music. Yeah. Would you do an album with your brother where it would be one side where you're speaking positive and the stuff that you're dealing with and him dealing with the stuff that he's dealing with back and forth? Because I, I just thought about that. That's a that great would be question. But Wait a minute. But I don't if feel did you did, negative, did, though. Did, well, that's what I'm saying. Just, just talking about the stuff, because he has been talking about what he's been through and, and his stripes and tribulations. Right. But talking about that side and then you talking about that side. Listen, I think there needs to be redemptive power in everything you do. If we did an album together... It would, for me, it would have to be edifying. It would have to be something that people can walk away with, to, you know, to 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 better uh, the listener. Not everyone had the luxury of having a father in the household like like I did. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes this music is what's raising them. It is the soundtrack to our lives. You washing your car, you pumping your gas, and you listening to what's going on. And then you carry that everywhere, you know, that you go. Now, depending on what you're being fed, you know, that's that's what you're gonna put out. My brother and I would crush the game. Mm-hmm. We would crush the game, in in my opinion. I mean, he raps the way I like to hear rap, you know. But um, my thing is, there is a mandate on my life. It is definitely a mandate on my life. And I can't afford, especially not right now, to be wishy-washy or, you know, wavering side to side. I need to be flat-footed. And my brother and people watching, they need something in this world, in this life, that is going to be flat-footed, unwavering. iPhone 5 today, iPhone 1000 tomorrow. We always flipping back and forth. So, you know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I follow his word. And whether they know they're counting on me or not, as long as he gives me the power to stand strong, I'm going to be flat-footed. I was, I was watching Minister Farrakhan at Savior's Day, and he said something that I already felt, but I feel like it's a cultural revolution going on. Like, you saw the Kendrick Lamar, Lamar performance at the Grammys and the message he put out. Uh, yes. Beyonce's formation video. Right. You're like I, I feel like you could get in that lane, too. You know, um, I, I think... I think you'd be powerful in that lane. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. 
Um, you know, I go where he calls me, man. Mm-hmm. I go where he calls me, and I like to make mention of of the uh, social issues and, and the things that that are going on in the world. I know, I know that I'm called to do that, but that is not the end all. What we have is a sin problem in this world. You know, um, it's not white against black, even though it, it that's the picture that it a lot of times it, it you know it portrays. But we all have a sin problem, and. Once you recognize that it is a sin problem, the Bible says above all things, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. So I don't care how many good things you do, you know, in the back of your mind, you could be thinking the most terrible thing. So I know that inside of me, there is no good thing. It is only Christ Jesus who was sin free. So I rest in him. Now you talked about one time you said you cheated on your wife, right? And I feel like for me, that's the biggest sin I have, this lustful desire. Okay. I love <laughs> Not saying I'm cheating on my wife, because I'm not, but that feels <laughs> like the biggest struggle that me as a man face. Like, I don't lie, I mean, I don't cheat, I don't steal. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't kill, but. You know, it's not so much. <laughs> say you can't even say that word. Hey, hey listen, listen, listen. It, it is not so much whether you carry out the act mm-hmm. or not, you know. Jesus said that, that, that your, your law says that you are not to commit adultery. He said, but I tell you, if you look at a wom- woman with uh, lustful desires, you have committed adultery in your heart. This is a heart matter. Man, you can get into it fussing, cussing, fighting, and, and just have a rage for each other. I don't have to kill you. You don't have to kill me. But we have a murderer's heart. This is a heart condition. Right. So it's what you have within your heart. You know what I'm saying? So, um... And then you say, you know, we don't we don't uh, steal or we don't, you know, cheat or whatever it is. Man, we have the capability. Everybody in this room has the capability of doing anything. And you have to be careful of saying what you would never do, Mm -hmm. because God have a way to show you. You thought you would never do that. That means you're leaning on your own righteousness. And we don't have no righteousness in and of ourselves. So you can't appreciate someone's beauty without feeling like lustful desires. It has to be lustful. Well, Who, me? Uh, yeah, Charlamagne. <laughs> yeah, I can. I mean, I'm saying, but sometimes you have lustful desires for women. Right. Not right. every woman, but sometimes you see women like, oh, she's right. beautiful. Right. Absolutely. Other times you see women be like, I want to smash. And this that. is foreign to you? Like, no, I'm just asking him a question now that you're oh, married. Because oh. I know I look at certain people and I can be like, okay, he's a good looking guy. That doesn't mean I look at him like I want to have. That's that. right. I don't but think she don't like have that. a penis. Penis is a wire so a little think- bit different. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we, penises are wide different, man. I think some women feel like that, too. Like, I was I him. Yeah, I'm sure women do feel like that, but I don't really... Well, and that's the thing. Once you realize that you do have this kind of thing in you, then you would have to admit that uh, we are not flawless. How and that's and that and that's where it starts. How did y'all deal with it? How, how, how did y'all... Uh, I mean, y'all, y'all still married now, so of course. Y'all, y'all had to deal with it. Let, how, how was that dealt with? Yeah, let me explain that, man, because, um, you know, I didn't get caught. I, I confess. Jesus Christ! You like G. Depp? When G. Depp killed the nah, man, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not like later. G. Depp. I'm not like G. Depp. But you know, it comes a time where, bro, if you have anything about yourself, about yourself as a man. You can't continue just to live that lifestyle. Like you can't, okay, maybe it's fun and games for a minute, but do you grow up at any point, Mm. you know? And then, you know, my wife, let me tell you what she did. When she got herself together, she came back in the room and she told me, not only do I forgive you, but I'm going to forget. So as I read the word of God, he says that, you know, he will, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He also says that he will remember our sins no more, um, put our sins as far as the east is from the west. So now when I'm chilling and we watching TV and, you know, it's always somebody cheating on TV or something. She doesn't nudge me. You know, she doesn't get an attitude. She doesn't do all of that. So when I see that kind of 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 forgiveness, I know my God is that much greater. And when he says that he will remember our sins no more, I see that that is possible through her, you know, and and God does it just that much greater. So that's why I believe in that word. How many women did you confess to, though? Hey, brother, man. If you, if you cheated with 10, hey, but wait only a minute. You, one. Hey, wait, you feeling like a snitch to me right now. <laughs> you feeling like a snitch to me right now. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> huh? I'm just asking, though. Do you confess to all I mean, of them I mean, or just one? What God lays on your heart. 
What yeah. he lays on your heart if he tells you to confess? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I would have just confessed to God. It's like, God, you know what I'm out here doing? Just please help me stop. Yeah, but you know what? I Telling believe... Wife, uh, that's a little bit much for me. No, nah, no. Nah, <laughs> but you know what? Had I not, I wouldn't have gotten closer to the Lord to see that his word is true. These are revelations. Mm-hmm. These things that we go to, through are revelations that always point back to our God. Now, let mm. me ask you this. How important is forgiveness? Because we had this discussion the other day. And some people in the room felt like, Everything is not forgivable. I feel forgiveness is overrated. Mm, shame I, on you. Depending on the, depend, shame on depending you. Depending on the situation. Because think about it, right? Mm-hmm. God forbid mm-hmm. somebody kills Pusha T. It's going to be hard for you to forgive a malice, and, 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 you, and nobody should ask you to forgive him. Because what is forgiveness? Let, 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 let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, man. That's tough. It's not that it is not tough. That's what makes forgiveness so powerful. If it was easy, everyone would do it. You know, if I love you because you love me, even the pagans do that. You, If you hate me and I love you, then there is reward in that. Can't you feel it? Can't you see that there is a reward? There is a ransom in that because we don't get along. But, you know, I still love you. I don't you. have to hate you just not to F with you. Like, yo, you killed my brother. Like, I don't wish nothing. I don't care what happens to you. I mean, you're, I, I you're don't I don't know. If, I don't know if you think, you know, I'm up here saying that we sh- should be sweet and party together. You know what I'm saying? If, if there's a trespass against me. But I'm just saying you have to realize how much you need forgiveness, mm-hmm. I, you know, within yourself. You know what you're doing, even if your wife don't know or whoever don't know what's going on. You know what you're doing. Right. So you have to understand that and know how much you need to forgiveness and be able to uh, forgive people. And that's another thing. We can't be throwing people away like that. We have relationships and somebody steps out of bounds. Of course, it is an atrocity and it hurts and it feels bad. But you throw them away. Where are you going? Who are you going to next who ain't going to do it? You know, and it's about overcoming these, man. But my that's o- different, though. Like I said, some things are forgivable. Some things aren't. I, right. I, I, well, that's where we disagree. I believe that all things are forgivable. I that It doesn't really. mean you, you rub shoulders with people and God all don't even forgive all the time. What do you mean? If that was the case, he, if you ask him, he wouldn't have flooded if, the earth if, with Noah. If you ask him, if, see. He wouldn't have flooded <laughs> the earth. He wouldn't have set uh, Sodom and Gomorrah on fire. Listen. When Jesus gave his life, he said, it is finished. And that's what we need to go back to. Envy, I saw you look away. Uh, That's what we need to go back to. You have to realize that this man literally gave his life, not only for what was done to you, but for what you've done to other people. Now, if you don't believe that, then yeah, you carry that unforgiveness in your heart. If you don't believe it, yeah, you wear that burden. I'm going to get you back. You know, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. That's what he says. It, it, It is not yours. Future says vengeance is young Metro. I don't. <laughs> if young Metro don't trust you, I'm a shooter. I'm a shooter. All right. <laughs> My goodness. Tell us about this documentary you have coming out. Man, the documentary <laughs> is the end of malice. Mm-hmm. It's about Malice coming to the end of himself, chronicles uh, my life in the industry, mm-hmm. family life, where I am today. And uh, it's just an awesome movie. And just to see the response and the, and the emotions from uh, the people that watch it, you know, laughing, crying, and, 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 the, and the questions that they ask at the end, man. It's just, it's just a very powerful movie. So. Is it based on your memoirs, or is this a completely different project? Uh, it's, it's a completely different mm-hmm. project, but uh, it's a memoir of sorts. You know, it's all having to do with, with my experiences. But it's not about me, you know, whatsoever. It's about uh, so many people can relate to these, mm-hmm. these situations. You know, this is this isn't it's not even about me. I don't even know if everything I went through was about me. I believe it was about the platform I had been given so I can come back and say, hey, we talked about this. We talked about that. But it's more to the story. When I think about the power of music, I think about like, you know, what, what Chuck D used to do with the microphone or what. Right. What it's KRS right. used to do with the microphone. Right. I can't even Wu-Tang for some people, especially right. me. Right. It's like, don't you think that can still be done now? When I hear the Kendrick Lamar's when I hear the J. Cole's. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, Cause I love your message. I just feel like the, the 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 way to deliver it could be through music to really impact people. Well, the gifts of God are irrevocable, so He don't take it back. You know, He wants you to use it to to bring Him His glory. But you can go party with the devil with it if you want to. You All definitely right. can. But uh, I I agree with you. You know, and I and I want y'all to look forward to more music coming from me. Definitely. Do you, do you, do you believe Satan has a kingdom too? You know, I, yeah, I be, we're in it. Yeah, he is the prince and power of this world right here. Jesus said that, yes. I remember, um, I, I just remember sitting back, I was watching the Source Awards one day, decades ago, <laughs> and my, my mom heard Trick Daddy say, he thanked God, and my mom was like, you really think 
God blessing him. He really thinks God blessing him, all that crazy stuff he be saying. We think that sometimes, you know, I remember at the Source Awards, I thank God, <laughs> you know, when I got when, when I got up there. But here's the thing. And, and, and I believe sometimes people do believe that it's God. You have to uh, think about what, what you're putting out here and not only what you're putting out, what do you think people are getting from that? And then, you know, you can uh, answer the question for yourself. We're not to judge people. We are to judge the fruit. So w when you see, you know, people listening to certain things and, and the message that you're putting out and, and what kind of response that it, that is bringing, then, you know, that's the fruit of what you're doing. And then you can tell whether it's of God or not. Word. Now, before you, you walked in here, we seen you guys praying outside. What, what, oh, so okay. What, 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 what was in that prayer? In that prayer, we pray that uh, God goes before us and that someone's heart is pricked. You know, we, we realize that it's not going to be everybody, but someone out there uh, need, needs to hear the message of the word of God. And, um, you know, there are people out there who just are not going to believe, you know, and God makes that very clear. But then there are those who just have not heard. And sometimes when you hear that truth, you just are regenerated instantly. Every time I heard something about God, I'm talking about as a, a little kid growing up, it always rang true to me. I didn't want to live by it. I wanted to do what I wanted to do, but I could not deny I heard a certain truth there, which accounts for my my music in the, in all those verses that it was always something about God always something about mm -hmm. God and then I would tack on at the end of it you know some kind of something I thought was cute and creative and justified you know me living the way that I wanted to live mm -hmm. so you know and the Bible tells me that uh, God will only be worshipped in spirit and in truth so I was giving you you know half truths the the uh, a lot always liked to uh, tag on the coattails of the truth. So I was giving half truths and, and, and trying to be an entertainer as well. And it just came to a point where, you know, I could no longer, God, God arrested my heart, man, hearing. And you got to just be all the way truthful with it. You can't, you can't front with them. Do you ever push your message on Pusher? No, I don't push nothing on anyone. You know, you don't want, the, the, the thing is, um, you don't want to turn people off right. and this ain't my message. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not like I'm going around like this is what I feel and think that this is something I truly believe. So if you see someone who doesn't believe what you believe, no, you don't you don't force it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Bible says it's not our job to convict their hearts. You, you just tell them. But you have to know if someone close to you does not believe, you have to know that that Christian hurts, like really hurts for that person. Mm -hmm. It ain't like, you know, we just trying to like, bro. Do you know what you in for? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying. You know, you know what's so, gonna happen. You know right, the end result. right. You know the end result. Yeah. So, so you know that's what it's about. When he has new music, is he like, yo, listen to this, and it's, if it's hot, but you don't like the message, nah. then what? No, 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 no. We don't. We don't even talk about music. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about music. We don't talk about industry. We don't talk about none of that. Uh, wow. My brother and I, we talk about things that's going on. You know, with our family. Um, you know. Uh, you know, I, I always ask how he's doing on the road and what's going on with him. You know, uh, like I said, I, I I would love to be there just to look after my brother. Right. You know, just just to, I just want to be there. Um, man, I care about him so much, man. Yeah. You know, and and uh, he's doing well. He looks good. You know, he, he he's taking care of uh, our mom and everything. You know, so so I I I don't condemn nothing. I can't condemn. I just have, he has a front row seat to seeing my transformation. He knew how I was on the road. He knew how I was growing up. He sees me now. Mm -hmm. So, so, and that's part of my motivation of just staying flat footed. I have to. You sound a little concerned about his circle though. Like maybe he's out with the wrong people. No, you or... know what? It's not that I'm concerned about his circle. It's just, and we were talking the other day. Dudes ain't thorough no more. Right they just not thorough no more. You know, um, it was a time where if you did dirt together and you got caught, then you just got caught. But you don't go pointing and saying who did it with you. Sorry, you know nigga, what I'm saying? I'm trying to come home. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so 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 it just seems like dudes just is just not. You don't you don't uh mess with your man's girl like you just don't do yeah, stuff yeah. like that no you know no yeah it's no rules no yeah. more everything to me just looks so weird to me you know yeah. and I, I just don't i don't know so um 
you know, I just I just would like to be around my brother, <laughs> just so he has some uh, something of of home and in in the upbringing and in the 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 codes that we used to live by around him. He's I don't I don't know what he has. With him when I see him, though, still on the road from back then. Those, okay, well that's good. Well that's good. That's good. why I don't like nobody for like gravitating towards God because I feel like that's the one thing I grew up with, which was a spiritual foundation. Mom being a Jehovah Witness, Grandma being a Baptist, Father being between Jehovah Witness and Islam. So it's like you got to have that faith in a higher power and i feel like people just don't have that anymore well and and then and that's what why the world is in, in the shape that it is now you know because there is no foundation it is nothing rock solid anymore to my eyes anyway all right we appreciate you joining us, man. Man, God bless y'all. Thank y'all for allowing me to come here and just to, just to share. That's leave, easy, pray man. For the room some balls, one of the two. Okay, well, you know I ain't spitting no balls. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah, job. yeah, but if I can't pray for the room, thank you, Envy Father God, in the name of a holy Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this fellowship right now. I thank you for these brothers and our sister Angela who just just control the airwaves and that they would allow us to come up here and just share your message. Lord, I ask that you just guide them and ask you, Lord, that anyone out there listening, that you would just prick their hearts. And when they hear something that is true to them, that they would know that you care about them, Lord, that they could call on you, that you are the restorer, the redeemer, a resting place for people out there who are just in the rat race and in the struggle and just working every day. Let them know, Lord, that the price has been Hey, Jesus said on the cross, it is finished and that we can rest in that. We trust in your word and I thank you in his holy name. We pray. Amen. 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 And P.S. Lord, please let young Metro trust and still more trust. in. Forgive young him, Lord. Heart. Please, Lord. <laughs> Forgive him, please. Lord. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's no hey, 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 yo, it's the screening tonight, too, of End of Malice. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. The, the screening tonight. Where is it at, Brendan? It's in Manhattan. He's whispering. <laughs> 19th Street? 19th and Broadway. Okay, all right. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so. Revolt on March yeah, 27th. Yeah, March 27th on Revolt. Okay. That's what's up. Check for what it. What time, you know? Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. Okay, all right. Yes, indeed. It's The Breakfast Club. It's no malice. Thank y'all. Hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.